What up, team? <coughs> Mythic Gahuni is dead. Uh, very happy to get this kill in. As I said in the video about movement, which was yesterday, I believe, um, I had a bad raid night, which cost and uh, didn't cost us any kills. That's a lie. I feel like it did. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. But it, it was stupid deaths. And we made some. Cha I made some changes personally, which allowed this to me so much easier from my point of view that I think it's worth going through the fight. We did this for Gul'dan, and it helps a lot of you with more of the, like, the intricacies you're going to pick up. Because you, what, you, what you're going to do is look at a lot of kill videos, and you're going to see generally what's supposed to happen. But it's all the little things all the time that really make this fight work. You need to have your individual list of checks to make all the way through the fight. Uh, so I think I'm going to talk you through this one from my point of view. So we're going to be doing it on the balance druid. I had to re-roll for this fight. As you know, I re-rolled two weeks ago. Uh, about 10 days ago in order to be full focused on Gahoon as a balanced druid because that was pre the Gahoon change so you guys who are tackling this fight now have had the change where you can use abilities on the side of the platforms <clears throat> we learned to do the fight without that uh, we had some like four percent wipes uh before the last reset before they changed it and the changes they brought in so you can now use abilities while doing the orbs didn't affect us it does help people to stop class stacking who are now going into the fight uh but when we did it you really needed to class stack so you can obviously see from the start a very stacked raid for this because it is a, a very hard encounter we've got to use five warlocks uh, the primary purpose of the five warlocks is basically the last phase. They do huge single target damage. Uh, so we're going to be looking for those warlocks to really go extreme in there. Uh, two BM hunters, good mobility, good consistent damage. Uh, two warriors, again, for the last phase. A lot of this raid is designed around the last phase because the last phase is the most grueling. It's the most difficult. Uh, we have one fire mage, again, for the last phase because... Fire Mages have huge mobility, and they have decent execute damage. Two Moonkins in me and Psyox here. Our job is basically to take care of the rest. Uh, and I will point this out. is like We had lots of conversations, me and Psyox, pull by pull. It took about 100 pulls to kill this, uh, where we were like, can we do something better? We felt like we were cheesing. Uh, and we were like, can we do this? Can we maybe heal up here? Do we refocus our DPS to these targets? And ultimately, we were both concluded, like, no. This is not what we want to do. Like, we're here to do a certain job. And our certain job is basically to take care of all these other elements of the fights, which are going to be Gahunads, uh, little tentacles and worms running around. Deal with that, because we're really strong at that. Our last phase is never going to be as good as the other guys, because Boonkin single target just isn't that great. Uh, so we're kind of these supplemental roles in order to take care of the adds. And also because we can teleport up to the sides, pre-nerf, that was something we needed to do. So let's Precisely. get started. Uh, let me it now Lenny Kant. Boys here. Lenny Kant. <laughs> Lenny Kant. Uh, a bit of bounce there. So your opener is something you're going to get used to. Let's pause just for a second because this is going to happen very, very quickly. Is your opener, after like four progress pulls, your opener should be set in stone about how you do this opener of the fight. Because it's going to get super intense, super fast. And you're going to have to be ready for it and be relaxed. The biggest tip I can give anybody approaching mythic gahoon in terms of how you should progress it is really you need to make each phase very comfortable very normal and it's not easy because there's so much going on but you have to find for you what is the most comfortable way of dealing with this so we're all going to be moving to the dark young the dark young is going to give a raid wide buff which is going to bring all the raid together because it's a buff that happens around him in a small radius so the whole raid is going to converge together so blizzard has tied that to giving you the orbs there is a huge amount of orb uh debuffs in this phase so you're going to see immediately spread so when you come to do this fight what you want to learn very quickly is your spot and don't fuck anybody else up by having a different spot all the time because what you're looking to do is everybody's going to compress together to get the buff and then expand out again and everybody needs to go to like a same the same place each and every time so that you know that this area is free the idea is that you drop these orbs away from the middle area of the room and so that means that the orbs are nice and spread out. Makes them far easier to dodge. So you're going to see that happening. So my start is on the left Cyclopean Terror. The reason for that is I am assigned to sun uh, to, <clears throat> to interrupt it. So I'm going to dot it. I'm going to drop the sunbeam. And then I'm going to interrupt uh, dot on this one. And then we're moving together. You can see this compression coming together. Now the immediate spread is going to happen. There's the buff. Immediately spread out. Look, nobody's moving near me. Like we're all spreading our areas. And that's because even though, and I want to point this out because some people get this screwed up, is the debuff, the explosive corruption comes out in like a couple of ticks. 
it's 12 people on mythic right it's more than 50 percent of your raid is going to get these debuffs that's a lot of orbs <laughs> it's a huge amount of orbs so it's very important that you spread out in a way that's not going to overlap people and be very careful near walls because walls tend to make all the orbs the orbs like when they spawn they look for a place to go and if they can't find them they they default back to where the other one is that means you can create stacks of three orbs in, and they look like one and they'll travel through and they'll instantly kill people uh they're super dangerous so be very wary of that so as you can see i always drop back into this sort of purple position to drop mine uh, and the point about there being like two waves of this so a lot i think it's like six people get the debuff then there's a pause and then another six are going to get it um this is important because if you move out and then go i didn't get it and move back in you're likely still to get it you, because so many people get it expect to get it and wait until it's definitely safe before you start running back into the middle of the room so i'm going to drop out here you can see i position slightly left uh, to the right of alex there you see we created like a wall there right it's a perfectly smooth wall then the room's pretty clear you can see there's very few orbs traveling through the middle at this point it makes it so much easier people are going to get hit by orbs every now and again it happens there's nothing you can do about it but here you can see the main focus of my phase one, which is just to dot the fucking spawns of Gahoon. Every ad you kill in this fight will spawn uh, these spawn of Gahoons, okay? So the Cyclopean Terrors spawn two. I think the Dark Young spawns like four. And the Gibbering Horrors we're going to get later spawn five or six. And if they touch you, they infest you. And that means you spawn two and it can get out of control very quickly. Uh, here again as soon as the dark young gives out the buff so this is the second time we're going to get the buff for the extra damage you can see i've got it here uh, there's my buff immediately after that it's the next orb debuffs so you can see how immediately i move out for that if we just rewind a, a little bit there's the buff coming out you can see the purple radius watch how everybody knows explosive corruption is coming you can see the timer here 0.5 seconds you move into the edge get your buff and then immediately you can see that the raid instantly spreads and disperses again looking where to go i i've always found myself disengaging towards the back of the room to make myself some area got a little caught in the slow but it, it happens it's only a tick or so it's not a big deal as long as you haven't got like a, an eyeball fucking burying its life on you you're fine uh you notice i have solar beam back and why aren't i interrupting again i am assigned to a specific one and if i take it early i can't do the one later and it's this one here so i'm going to dot this one and and uh, stun it again then we're going to fall back into this position again what we're trying to do here and every raid is going to do this in phase one is you're just trying to spawn all the spawns of gahoon and then you're going to bring everybody to this one area and that means all the the worms will funnel together makes them much easier to where we uh be ready with things like typhoon you see i've got my typhoon ready uh we get a blood dk to mass grip them sorry for the little pause in the video it's a very high bitrate video <clears throat> so that happens and that just instantly eliminates all of them they get they get mass gripped together blown up nice and easy so now we're going into phase two phase two is where you're going to hit what's going to wipe you the most i think most people coming into mythic gahoon and they haven't fought it yet are probably going to think orb running is going to be the big deal no orb running is by far the easiest part of this encounter and your wipes will not come from orb running instead they're going to come from the blood blisters or whatever they're called the blood blisters the way the three are going to spawn each time each one requires two people to soak it and they're based on the closest person which means you can be far away and still be the closest person that's something you can abuse certainly in the last phase uh and then you get debuffed meaning you can't soak the next time they spawn these bursting boils that are going to appear here. so you have to be so communicative when people got quiet that's when we had most of our most of our wipes there should be lots of communication every time a bursting boil comes up you should have so if there's three spawn you need two bills so there should be six people those six people who are heading to them should be sounding off straight away and not only that when they get there they should say it's covered you want to hear that three times every single time regardless because if you stop communication because it's like i'm used to soaking one over here i'm used to soaking one over here i'm not going to shout it every time if you get that attitude you are fucked you are so fucked because then you're going to get people who are like where's the guy and then he's going to be like one more purple one more purple one more purple. you're going to have this and it's going to be like you're just going to fuck it up and if anybody soaks two in a row they get mind controlled 
<clears throat> so you don't want that to happen uh, under any circumstances. This is what's going to wipe you most, and it's just communication. It's just communication. Like, we have people getting angry if people are communicating. So right now, I'll be going green. Mythic will be saying green, green covered. That's the conversation that needs to happen every single time, re regardless of whether it's obvious or whether you have this, uh, can't you see it? You know, it's pretty obvious there was nobody there. You'll have these arguments, and it will drive you crazy because the simplest way of dealing with this is just to say green right I, be, people will know your voice at this level blah 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 green green covered done and then you're happy and if you don't get that within like a second of them spawning that's where you're gonna have problems you're gonna have problems because people are gonna be like waiting at one before bothering to voice up uh here we have the blood feast so the blood feast have to be uh managed properly um if you've done lfr now you'll probably understand is that every time the wave goes out <clears throat> which splashes other people in mythic i believe it does in heroic as well uh, and gains you an extra stack of this which uh, of this which is very dangerous this is going to start ticking up but the way you remove this is by standing in the red ring for the blood feast so when blood feast is coming we're going to compress the raid to behind gahoon that means we're definitely going to get the ring to spawn there that's going to uh, pop off in a minute uh, you'll see a slight difference that way you've got to be ready uh, and then the people who stand within the red ring will get their blood removed. Now, the trick to this, though, is the more stacks this red ring clears, it counts up all the people that were in the red ring and how many stacks they had. It will then spawn a gibbering horror, and its HP will be directly linked to how many stacks it cleared. So you can see most of the raid has stacks, right? But not everybody's in this. And that's because this is one of the two blood feasts we're going to actually kill with players we're going to use the beam on two other ones so that means we can't have everybody clear their stacks in there because the gibbering horror will have too much hp and that's going to be a big problem because it does so much damage and it interrupts spell casts and you have to stop casting it's a real fucking problem it's a real problem so what you want to do is put in the minimum amount of people into the blood feast as possible now i'm in this one because i'm about to do my orb run but you can see everyone else gets out and then we spawn a gibbering horror and it only has 2.7 million hp you really don't want a gibbering horror going over 3 million hp you really don't want that because that's likely to do three casts of the interrupt the mind numbing chatter <laughs> three casts your healer's just gonna be like fuck off man we're done <laughs> go home so you can see we leave like one two three four five six seven eight people with the debuff we leave them with the debuff uh that's totally okay that's totally okay so i put some dots on here and i'm going to move over to what i do so I, I put some dots on i fire a star surge and then i'm going to drop out of moonkin farm and then going to target this jade serpent statue up here and i'm going to travel farm up to it and now i've got a lot of things to do really quickly at this point while i'm here uh the priest mythic is going round to the left to pick up the orb for me however where he lands there's a cyst and a cyst is causing a slow for him uh but you can see it also slows the area here what I need to do is I need to quickly dot my area, <clears throat> go into Moonkin Farm, dot my area, then I'm quickly going to select this one down here because this is where he lands and make it free for him. That's going to allow him to get to me much quicker. I'm then going to clear the way to my gateway, as you can see here, and try and clear off as much as possible. I don't even look where he is. I don't even care where he is. This is going to drop here. And again, this is just by progressing and learning it. Now, I will say this. In the first couple of pulls, uh, me and Mythic had a lot of back and forth. Which That's how I found out which sis was his problem. Uh, is there anything we could do to improve it? Anything we could do to speed it up? Ours is Our side is naturally quite slow compared to the other side. So, you're going to see something in a minute. Uh, I have a macro. Uh, it's, it's on my bar somewhere. But I have a macro that whispers three people. And I'm going to press it shortly. It whispers the guy on the other side of the room, because in Mythic you have to put two orbs in at the same time. You can see he's already there. Uh, Cloggy is already there, and that's because on his his thrower, so there's a thrower and a catcher. Uh, I'm the catcher, obviously I'm catching it here. His thrower is a demon hunter, can get there super fast. We're always going to be slower, but it's not a problem with the way this fight times out. You'll see it in a second. <clears throat> but I'm going to whisper three people. I'm going to whisper Cloggy, and that says, I am there. Uh, and we can put our orb in, right? Because we don't want that on voice comms. They're dealing with shit down in the middle. We don't need that. It's then going to whisper the two people who are going to do the next orb on my side and tell them they are ready. And that's going to activate, okay? That's then going to activate a weak aura, which picks up on that whisper, and it then gives an icon that says, you're next. So you're going to see in a minute, Cloggy is, because he's already there. You can see him on the map. He's going to use his macro to inform me that he's ready, 
and the two people uh, who are going to do it next. And you'll see this weak aura pop up. It's very useful. Uh, so I'm going to catch the orb. You can see there it is. Cloggington, Ragnaros is ready. Okay, so Cloggy's just sent me that message. He's not had to speak. You see there's the whisper that came through. Orb ready. I don't have to do anything else. I know he's ready. I just have to get there. So I'm going to gateway. As I land, I'm going to drop one Sunfire on here to clear this slowing area. It's going to be important to get back down and help with the spawns of Cahoon, which is my job, as we talked about in phase one. So I'm going to drop down here. Move fire. I sent my macro. There you can see. To Cloggington. All ready. So he will now on his screen. Mike's ready. So he sent him one to me that says, I'm ready. I then sent one back that says, okay, I'm ready. That means we can put our orb in. And I've then whispered Hyper and Mixel to say, you two are next. And they'll have a week or a saying, you two are next, just as a nice reminder. Put the orb in. GG. And I'm going to dot this one twice. This frees up my pathway. You see what I was aiming to do here? Free up my pathway. And you'll notice this works out kind of well for me. Is they kill that gibbering horror that we saw before. Just as I put my orb in. And that means all the spawns of Gahoon are down here. But you'll also notice they put this slow patch down. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is going to activate, uh, for, as a balance trade, I'm going to activate my Warrior of the Loon. That means that I can do my Lunar Strike, which has some AoE to it, Instant Cast. Uh, and also I need to clear this slow area to not take damage. So I'm going to flip around, I'm going to disengage over. I'm going to activate Warrior of the Loon while I'm in mid-flight. I'm going to drop a Starfall while I'm in mid-flight. And then going to Sunfire while I land. And then I'm going to go into dropping all these Lunar Strikes on them and finishing off these ads. So a very, I have several things to do in that couple of seconds to make it work. Now, <clears throat> my advantage here is, of course, I've been up orb running. That means I'm free to soak. Not only that, while you're up on the sides, you're not getting hit by waves, uh, which means you're not gaining stacks of the blood, which needs to be cleared in a blood feast. So that means that I am free to soak here. Bummer, right? Of all the people in the raid, it happened to me. Uh, my job here, like a signed job, is to go and soak here because the other guys, as you can see, the rest of the raid has stacks. Uh, they want to clear them in the blood feast, and also they've already they've been soaking these bloods while I was up there, the bursting boils. They've been soaking the bursting boils while I was up on the platform, so I'm the ideal candidate to soak. Unfortunately, this is what happens. But what it does mean is the blood feast is slightly out of position. Nothing I could do about that. Thank God I didn't disengage to somewhere. The blood feast would have been over here. Uh, but it's unavoidable. You've just got to adapt. So, one, there's a call to be made here. People are expecting me to soak now because that's what I always do, right? In Out of 100 pulls, I've probably never had this blood feast before. Simple as that. So I have to call quickly. I can't soak. Somebody who has stacks ain't clearing those stacks. It's as simple as that. I have it now. There's nothing I can do about it. Somebody else has got to soak. So the guys have to be super quick to adapt to this. And then, this is one of the only blood feasts where you can reset the whole raid because we're not going to kill this gibbering horror. Which means a big tip is if you're at this point in the fight, wave 5, you need to be very aware that you have to get in this blood feast as quickly as possible. So what we had is people... Call for grips. If you, if the blood, because the blood blister, uh, the blistering, bursting boil, can spawn anywhere in the room. It could be over by blue. It could be back here. It could be anywhere. You need to be aware that clearing your stacks here is a big deal. Because if you can't, you can't clear them later on either. And for a while, and that means you're going to take huge amounts of damage. Uh, so people will rush to get back into this. <clears throat> We obviously missed out on a couple of people there, but they had one stack, so it wasn't that bad. Then we're going to go to the first stun phase. Uh, boss DPS doesn't matter at all, really. Like it's so minor. Uh, you can, you're gonna. It, it does take double damage, which is very tempting to pad and cheese on. I do use my incarnation early. You'll notice I actually use incarnation well before that. I've just gone back a bit. I use it well before. I actually use it when on these ads. You'll notice that I'm going to jump over as we did before. I'm going to drop down here, and I'm also going to pop Incarn, because I need it for Phase 3. It doesn't matter for boss damage. You can see I'm using my big DPS cooldown now just to finish off the spawns of Gahoon. They're far more important. Uh, before all this, I'm, I'm blood feasted and, you know, using my big DPS cooldown. And the reason for that is simple. I need it to reset later in a more important period of time. So I either leave it and don't get to use it later during Bloodlust, or use it effectively, I should say. Or I can just pop it here. I get like six seconds of bonus damage on the boss, but boss damage is irrelevant. <clears throat> doesn't matter not going to help you with the rankings <laughs> uh, but it will help us later get the kill so again add spawn because you would even though we don't dps the gibbering horror and i will point out the stun that you cause does not affect the spawns of gahoon it will kill the gibbering horror which is why we can make a giant gibbering horror uh, but it's not going to kill the spawn so we have to kill the spawn so obviously we grip them near gahoon so we can actually dps him very cool uh, and now we're going to spread out again because one of the bigger problems you'll see this timer here for wave of corruption 
Gahoon works on spell queuing. It's very frustrating. That means that his spells have a cooldown. And that means they can come off cooldown while he's doing something else. And then it will just sit there. But he can use it anytime he wants. So you'll have a few pulls where this stun will end and you're doing what you want to do, which is heal, right? You're trying to get all the healers in here. You'll notice this is also the first use of my Innovate and it was on uh, Loz. Uh, the reason I don't use Innovate beforehand is I offered it out. <laughs> Nobody needed it. They don't need it at that point. The healers are fine. No big deal. So that's it. But this is my first assigned Innovate is on Loz. Uh, so he can spam heal during this. And he doesn't cost him any mana. It's like it never happened. And then we have another assigned innovate later in the fight on somebody else. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> you're going to have to gather, bef you're going to have to spread out before this stun phase ends. You're going to see people are moving out already. And that is because he can instantly wave. Like the second this stun ends, he can just wave. It's an instant wipe if that happens. It doesn't happen all the time. I don't even think it happens now, but it can happen. <laughs> it can happen and it sucks. Uh, this time we had a grace period, but he can instantly finish the stun and then just wave. And it you're just all dead. There's nothing you can do about it. Because you can see the explosion that comes off the wave on each person. <clears throat> so we're back down to Bursting Biles. And now we're kind of in uh, a chill phase, realistically. This phase matters a little bit. You want to keep boss damage up, but it's more about managing everything. And we're all going to be leading now to this one point. Again, it's about getting comfortable. Like Although there's a lot going on. I'm chill, you know, we're calling it, I got moon, he's got moon, moon's covered, simple as that, uh, but at this point, I, uh, we're just chilling, we're just chilling, there's nothing to worry about, we're going to spawn the blood feast, I'm not going to reset here, I've only got two stacks of the blood, it's fine, I'm going to move out of it, because we, we're going. this is the next gibbering horror we're going to kill, so we want it to be small, again, we want that under 3 million, it's 2.9, it's close, it's pretty big, we've had way, way smaller than this, but... If you've got somebody who managed, hasn't managed to reset earlier in the fight for whatever reason, they were soaking a blister, it doesn't matter, uh, then they need to reset there. They need to clear those stacks. It can happen. Somebody missed one. So you can see I'm actually popping out. I'm going to heal here. So you might ask yourself, I actually, I'm self-healing here. I'm swift mending myself and stuff like that. Why aren't you using a health stone and a health pot, right? Massive healing would allow me to continue to DPS. And like you just said, Mike, this thing needs to die. Uh, we're going to need it later. And that's another part of Gahoon that you need to be aware of is the last phase is such a gruel. Last phase is such a heavy, heavy gruel that you're going to need those things later. <clears throat> DPS right now is not that big of a deal. And we've talked about that in the nerd stuff where it's like up and down, up and down. When does DPS count? When does it not count? I can afford to drop out and just self-heal, save the health stone, save the health pot. It's not about maintaining DPS here. We're just worried about getting to this last phase. Again, I'm low health, but I'm not going to use a health stone or health pot. I need them later on. It's really simple as that. Drop to the back, soak the boil, watch out for the wave. Everyone stays in a nice position. Good. Trying to keep stacks low. And basically, we're working towards one big moment that's going to make or break killing this fight for most people, right? We're all working. All this crap we've done so far is just building this one moment. And it's pretty simple. Everybody in the raid needs to clear their blood stacks going into the last phase. So this last blood feast, this is the final blood feast, we need to get everybody in the raid. Because if you go into the last phase with a couple of stacks, you've made it so much harder. So, so much harder. And we get like nearly, I think we get 19 out of 20. I think there's one person who doesn't manage to get back, which is unfortunate. Now, this is tricky. <laughs> it's so tricky because bursting boils have just spawned. They have to be dealt with. Otherwise, we're going to get mind controls. Um, so people are going to have to move out to them. Look where they are. They're all together. It's not easy. Because like I said earlier, Bursting Boils, you have to be the closest. That doesn't mean you need to be close. But when they're all like that, it's not that easy. And if you are stood between two of them, right? So if you were stood here and both of them hit you, you're instantly mind controlled, right? You're instantly mind controlled. You can't play it that way. Uh, so you have to be moving out to these. There's no other way of getting around it. We've got to move out to these. So you can see the, and this is what you want to see. It was a big, big thing is bursting boils are an instant wipe maybe with stacks we have two combat reses everyone's played well maybe if you have to go into the last phase with stacks and you die early we can bring you back but not doing bursting boils is a wipe so when you're doing this fight you're gonna find cunts <laughs> which is basically how we started describing it who are like i was killing the spawns of gahoons that's why i didn't soak no fuck you soak it was far away so i didn't soak. fuck you soak if you don't, you're wiping us. 
It's that simple. And you're going to have this all the time. And people will oh, uh, fuck you, Soak. If you, I had three stacks, I had three Fuck you, Soak. If you die from stacks, we can res you. Right? We can't do anything if you're going to get people mind controlled in bad scenarios. Because if this goes out of whack, it's bad. Go and soak. We could potentially heal through it. We can throw cooldowns on you. I've got four stacks. I need three set. Okay. Sh you shouldn't be soaking. You're right. You shouldn't be soaking. But it's better that than have people mind controlled. And we can maybe throw pain suppression on you. We can throw things on you. We can let the healers know. You can vocalize it. I've got four stacks. It's not that long between blood feasts. It's not. And you can reset on the next one. There's ways around it. Fuck you, soak. Right? So there's a blood feast. And instantly we're going to get people in. You can see there are grips going on. Like I said earlier. That's people who are running out. Remember how early you can call this stuff. Remember what we talked about in the movement video yesterday you're aware this is a problem you knew way back when these blood boil blood bursting boils spawned that when they spawned here right that you're going to need a grip you had ages right you had like 10 seconds to, to say i'm moving out like this guy i'm moving out i have no good speed way of getting back to this grip me please can you grip me when it pops right and that's what we're gonna do so unfortunately uh alex got mind controlled here and this was more a case of raid leader taking over and it happens is that he was like we need to soak this and he shot out for it but he was already uh debuffed so unfortunately he got mind controlled notice this a lot of people take the piss out of this this is great you know when you get this mark in this fight if you can't soak if i have this big giant thing on my screen i can't soak I find it super useful. I know a lot of people meme on this week or that just gives you this big thing if you have a raid marker. As long as your raid's not fucking trolling you all the time, which rarely happens in when you're actually doing progress, this is great. It's just like you can't soak. Simple as that. If you have that mark. Uh, so we're going to kill Alex, get him out of there. And we got <clears throat> everybody reset except two. So two healers. <clears throat> not great. As you can imagine, not great. Uh, so we're going to kill Alex. Uh, I'm going to res him. Alex is back in the game. All right, we're solid. So now comes collapse phase. Collapse phase, basically they wanted to ensure the last phase was a real arduous gruel. Uh, so he's going to stop losing health at 20%. And then he's going to go into the collapse phase. So it freezes the fight in terms of DPS and Gahoon. So you couldn't get extra damage out during this phase. Uh, and basically it's going to have the raid run around. Which again, needs to be organized. So there's two markers here. There's the purple and there's the moon. Uh, over here and basically we're going to do it this way the collapse always spawns on a player so we're going to move as a group so we can guarantee where it's going to spawn and then we've got abilities that are going to allow us to move to the exact opposite side of the room as quickly as possible because it does fall off damage that means the further away you are the less damage it does uh, so it's going to be a windrush totem from a shaman it's going to let us go one way and then we're going to warlock gateway back uh, so we're going to assess the situation and say right where do we want to be we're going to take care of these ads <clears throat> rebuff alex and then we're going to get the call. So we're getting healed up as much as we can here. Now, you can't DPS in this phase. So as a moon kid, that means we can throw out wild growth and whatever. So we're going to move back here. You can see I'm going to... do. I threw out my wild growth. I'm going to go over here. This is the Windrush Totem. I'm going to disengage back over. Nice and easy. Land back at purple. Wild growth, everybody again. Back through the gateway. Back to the other side. And now we go to reassign positions. And then this begins like the most difficult part of the fight. Uh, I made this fight way more difficult myself than it should have been. So I'm hoping that we I can give you some tips <clears throat> to make this easier. The biggest thing that I picked up when I went back and saw why I felt like it was so stressful, because usually raid encounters don't stress me out, uh, but this there you can see the incarn lines up perfectly with the bloodlust. That's why we did that early incarn. So think about that if you've got the cooldowns. Will they line up perfectly? Uh, so in this phase, we've got the bursting boils. However, they are easier. And this is why phase three is such a twist on the fight. And it's why phase three feels difficult to get your head around, because it's... It's actually quite easy, but the one extra mechanic it does add makes it difficult. So bursting boil is easier now because more people can soak. Way more people can soak. We don't have people who are going to disappear and run orbs, so they can't soak. We don't have just generally less players who can't soak. A lot more people can soak. That makes bursting boil easy. You still need to call it. You still need to do things, but it's not as stressful as it has been where you've had to have people charging across the room and things like that. You've not had to do that. Uh, wave of corruption actually has a pretty long count, uh, cooldown, and that means you can stack for a good period of time in this phase. As long as you're aware of what's happening 
uh, you can stack for a reasonable period of time because you've been naturally taught by this fight to be spread at all times. Phase one, phase two has taught you to be spread out at all times. Phase three, you don't really need to do that. You need to be spread for wave, but waves not that often. And though this then adds in the mechanic of malignant growth, which is going to chop up the room into slices like a pizza and could force people to compress into small areas. I had to let go going into this phase of my previous everything i had taught myself about this fight like i must be spread out i must do this i just let it go and i was like i can stack here that's fine i can land on people it's all good as long as i'm aware of when waves coming in it's fine so we're chilling and i i was very relaxed this time in this phase very very relaxed there's the malignant gross okay waves coming in three seconds so we're gonna move over right and you've got to be considerate of other people all right a thing that was happening is if you are when we're moving so there's the malignant growth pizza slice right you can see it coming out from the boss so we're going to shift people over to this side and maybe even people from this side are going to come over here so a lot of people in one area when they start detonating you've got to get back into that area really quickly what you don't want to do is just move so you're safe and carry on dpsing because this is a big dps check we're fighting now and then stop because that means that other people are going to have to run through now sometimes that's okay but if waves coming which it will do because of the spell queuing it causes overlaps you're causing people to have so much stress unnecessarily and maybe wipes and gaining extra stacks it's a whole bad thing so be courteous of other people so as you can see i move over to here i'm not going too far because i don't need to right i'm nice and chill i'm going to wait for this and i'm going to move back uh, there's the wave but you can see i move just that bit further make sure there's enough room nice and easy and again very relaxed just gently go back to my position now this is also important in this phase remember how these bursting boils work right they're based on range <clears throat> people are very visual they'll check they'll just glance at a bursting boil see a couple of people around it and they'll call it good even though i have a marker over my head like a moon which means i can't soak this people are going to go yeah, there's a couple of people there. I saw some people there. You're going to have these conversations. Well, I saw a couple of people there, but blah, 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 blah. The best thing you could do to help friends, and I'm going to do it right now, is move the fuck away from them if you can't soak them. Vocalize it if you're comfortable enough. If you're not stressing out, just say, I can't soak at purple because that's usually where I would soak. I've already soaked. I can't do another one. Uh, I'm going to move out of the fucking way. Get out of the way. Let the other people do it. Assess the situation. There's more than two unmarked people near this one. I'm good. I'm not going to get mind controlled. But get the fuck out of the way. For the love of God, get out of the fucking way. Again, malignant growth. Moving right far back. Giving people as much room as possible. Going to do the gaze. Now, very difficult. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I'm probably not going to make it round this corner before this. This one's already large, man. It's going to blow up on me. So I'm going to shoot across here. Try and cut the line. Land it in the slow, but I'd rather land it in the slow than uh, be exploded by that thing. I can soak now, though. Again, moving to the back. Giving as much room as possible because there's another bursting boil there. Don't want to be in between. No, no, no. Don't want to be in between. So I'm going to drop to the back and DPS from back here. Uh, I think this is the best way to go. Another person moves in for it. That's fine. That's fine. I can sort the next one. It's all good. It's all good, man. Like, so much stress comes out. This is mine! Why are you running here? Why are you doing that? Chill. There's more important things going on. It's fine. Uh, so, off we go. Again, it's all about looking. Where's malignant growth? There it is. I think immediately, because I'm so used to moving to my left. Uh, but you have to reevaluate. No, I'm going right. It's all good. Gonna stand in this corner. GG. I'm gonna chill here. And then I'm gonna move back over nice and slow. And I'm safe. Easy as that. Very relaxed. Keep it as chill as you can. Just assess your situation. Assess your situation. I remember I can still soak, but I'm dying. So I stop out again. I drop a heal. I've still got my health potion. Used it now. So I've got myself back to full health. Because this is when healers are starting to get fucking stressed, boys. This is the make or break of this fight. This is where you are fucking screwed why the whole raid tank's got six stacks other tanks got five stacks dm do has got six stacks this is i think it's something like 70k damage a second or something stupid on the raid you need to keep yourself up to squeeze these last couple of percentages out so i dropped out of dropped out of dps heal myself to full wasn't quite enough drop a healing potion on top and we've got no bark skin we've got no defensives left this is the make or break time. It's really pushed you. You can see the raid is just being grind to 
it's death. They are grinding this raid down. And you've got to maintain your chill. You're going to die here. In most cases, a lot of your raid is going to die. Certainly on the first kill before you way over gear it or whatever. You're going to die here. Well, you also have the explosive corruption going out, the orbs as well. Uh, so bear that in mind. You're going to die here. That's okay. Just try and do the best you can while that is happening. Try and keep going. Move back in. Unfortunately, I drop out to heal myself again. You can see I'm actually in resto farm here, trying to heal myself. Not much I could do. I mean, I'm out of everything. We've got no bark skin, no health stone, no health potion. But that's okay. We did our bit. We innovated our priest when we could. We've got nothing left. Our moon kid has run dry. As I said at the beginning, we're not going to do massive damage in this phase anyway. Not compared to the warlocks, the warriors, and so on and so forth. We're not there for that. So I've done my job. I've used everything I could do. We've got nothing left to give other than mediocre, non-buffed DPS. It's not that. It's not the end of the world at all to have this happen. <clears throat> so now it's like hitting home. And hopefully you're going to bring it home. There's only 1.9% left by the time this happened. And that's uh, it's GG's and that should hopefully bring you to it. But th hopefully those are the tips that can help you through this. A lot of courtesy needs to be given in the last phase. But also bear in mind that... You have to switch your play style from like being drilled into your head. Spread out, spread out, waves are coming. Spread out, spread out, spread out. No, actually, well, in this phase, you can actually compress. You can do it in the other phases, but it makes no sense to. But compress back down, relax. You can stand on other people. Check your malignant growth and think about what's the best way to go about it. Like, <laughs> do I want to do this way? Do I want to do that way? And also, how does where I stand affect other people when they're coming through? What if there's a wave at the same time? Like, how would that affect them? You need to be thinking about these things when putting this fight together. And again, a little bit of practice. You're going to need to do quite a few fa uh, last phase pulls before you actually get the kill. Uh, but that's okay. <clears throat> that's all right. And there you go. Ba -dung! And then you can get your famed Slayer title. And be all good. Be all good. But there you go. Mythic Gahoon, guys. Uh, not a great fight. I don't particularly enjoy the fight. I think it's a little... Uh, uh, I think it, uh, the class stacking definitely put me off, but that's not a big deal now. But it is how I did the fight. Which kind of put me off a bit. I don't. I find the last phase very intense. And I think the last phase is my favorite. I like that intensity. Everything else in the fight seems to just lead to the last phase. Which sounds very mundane. But it's understandable. It's like it's very unimportant. Like boss damage is unimportant really. Uh, in, the, in like gear that you're going to be doing this in. It's just unimportant things leading. It's like stuff that's just trying to kill you. To make sure you can you get everybody to the last phase. That's all phase one and two seems to do. But not a terrible fight either. Not a terrible fight. I thought it was decent enough. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. A mythic Gahuni Huni. Uh, I hope that helps you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again.